I'm Eileen Slifring. And I'm Damian Fowler. And welcome to this edition of The Current Podcast. The Current is your deep dive into the future of TV, media, and data driven marketing, all explained in plain English. We talked to the biggest names in digital marketing, and this week we sit down with Kara Pratt, the SVP of Retail Media at Kroger Precision Marketing at 8451, the supermarket chain's data and analytics business. We'll explain that number in a minute. Few people know more about the power and the opportunity of retail media than Kara. When she launched Kroger Precision Marketing in 2017, retail media was still relatively new. Now, with the boom in e-commerce, it's a key part of every advertiser's marketing strategy. Using machine learning, Kara and her team of data scientists can tap purchase data from 60 million households to create more personal experiences for shoppers. And last year, AdAge named Kara among its leading women of 2022. Since this is a numbers-driven business, we started by asking Kara to explain the significance of the company's 8451 number in its name. Eighty four fifty one is the wholly owned subsidiary of the Kroger Company. We're a data science, consumer insight, retail media business of Kroger and have over twelve hundred data scientists and engineers, analysts, media specialists, consultants that live and breathe uh, Kroger day in and day out. Eighty four fifty one is the longitudinal line of our Cincinnati headquarter office. And it's just a nod to our ability and opportunity to monitor behavior over time and the value that we can bring back to our customers and to our brand partners about leveraging that intelligence to, to make better decisions, whether it's traditional merchant decisions or whether it's um, you know, advertising uh, uh, recommendations for audience relevance and content and, and measuring the impact of brand exposure over time. So 8451 certainly gives Kroger an edge in retail media and few retailers have the strength of the dedicated data science assets that we have and the operational rigor and rhythm that we have. Yeah, that's a fun little name for like a data science operation. I feel like it's very fitting. Can you tell us about how you use data science to build out your strategy and perhaps why that approach was a breakthrough for marketing? We started Kroger Precision Marketing to make the shopping experience easier for customers and to make advertising more effective for brands pretty simple at at the heart of it, uh, but a bullish statement and a bullish commitment that we have in the advertising ecosystem, which, you know, we can all appreciate. It's fragmented. Uh, There's a pretty broad and wide media supply chain. There's a lot of changes happening within the business dynamic and the enablement dynamic for media to deploy in a productive way. On first party data, what we've seen is 90% of the predictive model behaviors are explained. When you're using third-party data, only 30% of the predictive model behaviors are explained. And that just starts that process, you know, unlocking an understanding of of human connection and, and the value exchange that we can create for customers ultimately and for brands. Could you also give us a sense of the scale of Kroger's operations? Because I know that you also have a huge physical footprint in the United States, as well as a digital presence. Could you connect those two things together for us? Kroger full stop is America's grocer. You know, we are uh, in one out of every two U.S. households shop within Kroger stores every year. Uh, we operate over 2,700 store locations across 35 states. Uh, this offers a, a real opportunity for us to create a, a, a brand impact. From an e-com standpoint, uh, top 15 e-commerce retailer, you know, we've got page views that are up significantly, uh, you know, 80% year over year in app usage, up over 20% year over year. The adoption of digital assets as customers are engaging with digital assets to influence their shopping behaviors, it really is exploding. And for us, it's around how we create those connections with how customers want to engage with Kroger. Do they want to come into our stores? Do they want to engage on our app or on the website? Uh, do they want food delivered to their home? Do they want to pick it up at our store after doing an online order? You know, we have to serve customers how, how customers want to engage with us. We have to create these moments of delight uh, in the right way. Uh, and, and that's our promise. That's our commitment. At what point did you reach, you know, from Kroger Precision Marketing's point of view, this sort of critical turning point at which you could read customer behavior? you know, 15 years ago, there were a lot of personalized touch points where, you know, we could send relevant content, relevant offers uh, to people's home. And over time, the evolution has moved into digital domains. You know, last year alone, we served over 2 trillion personalized product recommendations on our web properties, web and app properties. And, you know, half of the items that are added to basket are due to personalized search results. 
think about the opportunity that that unveils uh, to reduce wasted impressions for brands, right? To create this moment of delight. It's a really powerful asset. Suddenly, it seems like every retailer is getting into the retail media game. Why do you think there is so much interest focused here? There's a real unique opportunity with the quality of the data uh, that grocery retailers can bring to the forefront, and, and data quality matters. I mean, we know uh, how quickly data can get old, the different signals that have to come forward in the right way. So as we think about new content experiences that customers may want, all that really comes together in, in meaningful ways. And uh, the value and the purpose of how brick and mortar shopping is being influenced by digital engagement is uh, is really, really strong. But we also can start to get signals on you know, consumer adoption to innovation. Now, that's talking specifically on the endemic side. There's an opportunity as an extension into the non-endemic side. As we think about how less consumption habits influence and feed into QSR, fitness and diet, apparel, uh, there's, uh, there's a real opportunity to bring this forward in meaningful ways. How do you see non-endemic brands leveraging that retail data? You mentioned QSR, but what are some of the other surprising categories and brands that you might find across that retail media landscape? There's no doubt with a lot of the different buying habits and buying behaviors that there's a uh, nice viewability and visibility into the different lifestyles that we can understand. The grocery signals that can influence broader retail industries is really powerful and really strong, and we uh, look forward to continuing to explore that. You know, our commitment is to drive a more accountable media investment dollar for brands, which means let's expose the content to the customers that are going to drive the business results those advertisers are looking for, uh, and then let's measure the business impact that that had. And obviously, in the non-endemic space, we want to make sure that when we're, we're you know, with brand partners or, or their agency partners, uh, you know, optimizing and, and building plans on behalf of their brands, uh, that we're delivering well ahead of the building blocks that they already have in play, right? The traditional media metrics and, and what is the baseline performance metric that they're looking at, which obviously we hold ourselves to pretty high standards for. What would you say are some of the challenges to innovating in this space? We fundamentally believe that it is critical to to bring new standards to the forefront. And that's why you're going to see uh, Kroger uh, have a very active voice with the likes of the Interactive Advertising Bureau, setting the stage and setting plans and setting a bar. But for retail media to be media and to be you know consumable and interchangeable, we need to make sure that all these media players can deliver against the same expectations. The competitive nature of kind of creating these different experiences is powerful. It's, it's all about driving performance. It's all about driving business impact. There's a lot of consumer-driven change and market-driven change that's creating this opportunity for retail media to come to the forefront and for the light to, to start uh, shining bright or perhaps continue to shine bright. This is a moment in time we're only going to continue to uh, to lean in more to as consumers, how we use devices and what the expectations that we have for how media can seamlessly connect to commerce, what we buy. On the market-driven change, of course, we know cookie deprecating is going to happen. We know the privacy laws appropriately are bringing uh, yeah, new changes to the environment. Uh, we know that the scrutiny on ad effectiveness from CFOs, from CMOs is high and will continue to be high. All those things are driving really productive conversations to influence the future. Uh, and to cement new standards. And, and I look forward to the role that retailers will play uh, to establish themselves and have a common, you know, common frame with respect to measurement standards, performance standards, and you know, frankly, broadly, you know, how we influence the media industry. Do you think the common standards that you refer to are you know, perhaps imminent? Are they about to happen? I'm fairly confident that in the next 12 to 18 months, there'll be meaningful change uh, that's cemented uh, for all players to come forward with. And that's going to create a, a really productive, powerful environment for uh, brands and their agency partners investing on behalf of brands, uh, as well, again, most importantly for, for consumers, right? And how they uh, have the right visibility into discovery uh, of product and the different experience advancements that are going to come through all channels, uh, you know, programmatically, pub direct, uh, yeah, CTV evolu you know, evolution, et cetera. So uh, I think it's an exciting time for all of that. And we talk a lot about innovation really needing to span three domains, uh, commercial domains, technical domains and operational domains. If retailers and, and their media teams within aren't investing in all of those three spaces, uh, they're, they're, there's way too high a risk to go sideways. Uh, you're not going to be able to support the demand in the right way to scale. 
Uh, you're not going to be able to create an environment uh, for uh, for the the buy side to engage with in the most productive way. You're not going to be able to to you know operationalize. Uh, you're not going to be able to build the most unique uh, consumable experiences for customers. And so, really important for organizations to know their point of difference, know the environment around them, know the breadth of capabilities that exist, uh, know where they stand and where they're leading and where they're lagging and continue to elevate uh, themselves and, and therefore continue to create new markers for where this industry can go because uh, there's incredible fundamentals within what retailers can shine a light on with respect to the performant nature of media uh, that just hasn't existed in the past near to the degree that it needs to with, you know, the what, roughly $370 billion in the U.S. that's spent on media. Um, not all of it's obviously programmatic and, and traceable, but there's a real opportunity that we can do to uh, to bring more visibility and understanding into how those dollars are working hard and, and changing behavior. I wanted to ask you sort of off the back of that, how do you help brands leverage cross-channel marketing? Uh, at Kroger, 90% of our top 500 keyword search terms are unbranded search terms. That means customers are looking for discovery. Uh, they're looking for ice cream. They're looking for cereal. They're looking for candy. They're looking for bread. They're not necessarily denoting what exactly they want. So it's up to us to bring personalization to the forefront and expose them to content that matters. It's up to us to have the right business logic to turn the dials for when brands can and should be bringing you know, inspiration through, uh, through paid search placements. Now, 42% of people who click on our, our, our paid search ads are actually new or lapsed users to the brand. They haven't bought that brand in the last six months. We have a media planning team that works closely with our teams that work directly with brands and agency partners that will put full package recommendations together, importantly, based off of the business objective that a brand has. That business objective, particularly on traditional awareness-driven dollar investments, that may be around driving consideration. It may be around driving penetration new households coming into the brand. So we're going to optimize the relevant audience we want to expose that content to across social platforms, across programmatic investments. All of those connective pieces need to be playing together. And what happens when, when brands do that right? Well, you see three to five X higher sales when you're running cross-channel, you know, multi-channel campaigns really intentionally for, uh, for brands uh, than if folks are running single channel activations. That sounds like very efficient reach, but uh, how are you working to eliminate inefficient reach, uh, you know, in order to optimize this process you just described? It starts up front with making sure that we understand what that business objective is, what the brand outcome is that they're looking to deliver against. And we're using the different data signals to pre-optimize who's the right audience to expose that content to. But they're really enjoying the ability to leverage uh, the, the sales data, right? Sales data, in-store and online sales data in near real time for in-flight you know, campaigns. It's a, it's a really powerful play and it's just the beginning. So, you know, we're running a, a week in arrears and, and folks will have visibility into, you know, day of week, uh, creative, you know, lenses, uh, a whole host of different attributes off of the campaign deployments that they're pushing through that they can then build out future optimizations for the flight of the campaign. As the largest grocer in the U.S., how have you seen consumer habits change over the past several years? Obviously, we went through COVID, and now we're in a period where consumers are anxious about inflation. There's no doubt that being in tune contextually with what's happening in the world around us is really critical. It's critical for marketers. Uh, it's, it's critical for, frankly, every industry in the ad tech ecosystem. We have to all be in tune with that. Um, inflation is top of mind uh, for for everyone. We know that you know specific behaviors vary by household, but and ninety percent of our shoppers have acknowledged making some change in their grocery habits over the last few months due to inflation. You know, there's more deal seeking that's happening. Uh, we have an incredible asset and opportunity to create those connections meaningfully for customers to help stretch their dollar. We can send the right offers to households. We're promoting digital offers and, and incentives. We're you know rewarding loyal shoppers in different ways, and so. Uh, this is a unique opportunity for us to always be in tune because behaviors will continue to evolve over time. There will be something into the future that we don't have our crystal ball for yet. But as long as we're in tune with understanding the, the why behind behavior change and how we're using the information, the signals around us to create their lives, make their lives easier, right? create these moments of delight, these moments of inspiration in productive ways, then we can take and leverage the power of the brand equity that brands have and make sure that we're connecting the dots in the right way with the right shoppers where that's going to unlock the right value and, and you know, ultimately create consistent habits. 
you need you know, 10 shoppers to deliver against the same value exchange of one loyal shopper. When you get into brands, you're seeing that ratio be 25 to 30 to one pretty consistently. And so this is this unique opportunity for uh, brand advertisers to be in tune with market context around us and to be creating those moments of delight and being really intentional on those investment strategies of what is uh, about driving net new household into the brand? What is about retaining a household into the brand? How do you change the dynamics of creative to drive buy rate, right? Increase the adoption, engagement, and loyalty among existing households. You know, you announced last fall that Kroger Precision Marketing is expanding into the CTV inventory. How do you see retail data playing into CTV buys going forward? And what does that mean for brands? I think we're just getting started and it's really exciting. Uh, I believe it was in July when streaming usage surpassed cable for the first time ever. Right, is the largest share of TV viewing. And uh, we believe that 2023 is going to be a really incredible year for brands as they continue to plan for the shift of TV, TV budgets, right, from linear into connected TV and the power of how retail intelligence uh, can make those investment choices, uh, you know, even stronger, even more performant. Now, audience fragmentations making the traditional TV ad model less sustainable uh, and the pace of change in consumer media habits is, is fast. As we think about how people live, how people shop, how people consume media, it's all different today than it was, heck, only two years ago, let alone 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so brands have to find new ways to connect with consumers. So, yeah, I think this is, uh, we're just at the beginning. There's a huge opportunity uh, for innovation to continue to play out. Think about dynamic ad insertion, and there's a lot of tech readiness that needs to happen to enable that, but that's just going to supercharge uh, investment choices into CTV uh, and drive an even greater level of effectiveness. What would you say are you most excited about in this new year, 2023? Like this is going to be a really exciting year because the uh, role that retailers can play uh, to influence media investments, that education layer has been happening over the last few years. And now, you know, we're at a stage where there's real recognition, real understanding for brands, uh, their agency partners. And so now we've got an opportunity to uh, deliver, right? Deliver against that promise, deliver against that commitment, and ultimately deliver customers value. Right? They are in the driver's seat. We have to prioritize as an industry customer experience. It's going to keep this industry on track. It's going to keep the investment choices delivering the right value exchange. Uh, and, and ultimately, that is the expectation layer that we should all have in the digital media industry. That's it for The Current. Stay tuned because next time we'll be talking with Tim Ria, the Chief Experience and Marketing Officer for Edward Jones. I give this advice to, to young marketers that it's all about this mantra I have of simplicity, transparency, and keeping the perspective of the end user. That's the what. And the how is you, you got to do your research, you got to keep it simple, and you got to be real. The Current is produced by Wonder Media Network. Our theme is by Loving Caliber. The Trade Desk team includes Chris Brooklier and Kat Vesey. And remember... For anybody listening in that doesn't feel that uh, the partners that they're having conversations with have brought standards to the forefront, you're having conversations with the wrong people. So get into the conversations with the entities that are driving change, that are delivering against the commitments that we have to elevate the industry. And when we do that, good things will happen. I'm Elise. And I'm Damien. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>